Let's skip here. Yeah, server recording. All right, so I explained to you guys earlier on that um, in small ranges, that is where accumulation of price occurs, okay? So you're gonna see when price forms kind of like a tight range or especially when the, um, the daily range is very small. Okay, when you see small daily ranges, that tells you that very soon there is going to be a very expansive phase in the market. So let's look at examples of what I'm talking about. Let's see, when, okay. All right, so what I just showed you here was the ICT London swing to Z day, right? So price opened, makes that false move down, you wanna see around London, then gives you that Q zone, then price, price has to move and then retraces back and simply just ranges until price closes, okay? So this is gonna constitute a small daily range. Now, inside small daily ranges, that is where the institutions accumulate price. And then after the accumulation, oftentimes the next, over the next few days, you're going to see the explosive move because it's inside smaller ranges or small ranges that is where the buying or the trading by the larger players, the institutions, okay? That is where all the trading takes place. So now, if you look at GBP USD, you're gonna see inside this small range, okay? Market trades up, gives you that London open kill zone, okay? Then rallies, right? So the market rallies, then ranges, 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 ranges. Now, the daily range for this day was uh, 81 pips. Okay, that was the daily range from the low to the high. Okay, the one pins. Now, notice how the next day was very explosive in price. Very explosive price, um, price move the next day. Okay, so what then happened was the market opened, gave the usual London uh, kills in, and then exploded. Daily range was 176 pips nearly three times that, sorry, more than th twice that of the uh, previous daily range, okay? More than th twice that of the previous daily range because inside that previous daily range, like I said, that is where the institutions do majority of their trading, okay? Institutions do not trade in big ranges, okay? Big ranges are a result of the smaller ranges. The big ranges are a result of the buying and selling by the bigger or the larger players in the marketplace. Okay, they are the result of their actions in small ranges. So uh, let's look at more examples. Let's see. All right, so if you look to the left of my screen, you'd see very tight ranges from this level what the fuck from this level for about one two three four days okay five okay so very very tight range market made a very tight range give the typical power free setup okay falls breakout around this level boom okay and then explosive move so now i'm not giving an example of um, a buy the template, what I'm simply trying to point out is you want to focus on the small ranges, okay? Because the small ranges, that is where the buying or selling by the big players are taking place, okay? And then the result of that small range is going to be an explosive move, right? So explosive move. Uh, on average, the range here was around uh, 109 pips from low to high of the range. And then after the very tight range, the explosive move, we add about um, 434 pips. So about four times that of the average daily range for the last past, so, sorry, for the past five days. Oh, sorry, what the fuck's going on? All right, so for the past five days, the market went sideways, then on the um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six day, the market exploded four times that of the daily range. So if you're taking notes, make sure you write that down. In small ranges, that is where 
the institutional accumulation occurs or takes place in the market, basically. So uh, I think that is settled. Let's get back to yeah. So ICT London swing to Z day is simply a small daily range. And oftentimes you might expect your TP in form of Fibonacci retracement or time of day to pan out. But what you're gonna see is the market is gonna open, drop down, give it that nice clean setup around London, but would not really make any move for that day. Okay, so the market would simply rage range into the next day. We can best expect that if you get an entry around that session, you can hold that trade, expecting higher prices or more explosive move going into the next day for ICC London swing to ZD. Okay, so um, and uh, one more thing to understand is oftentimes when you get a, a very extended move in the marketplace. Okay, so the market has been going in one direction for a very long period of time okay very extended move or very large moves in the marketplace then oftentimes for the market to sort you're going to get this kind of day okay so now let me give um let me give an example so if you see around monday tuesday going to wednesday the market was going very bullish okay in a bullish market condition Obviously, when it's in the market, go bullish. Okay, so the market was going bullish and the market went very bullish. Okay, Monday explosive, uh, explosive move, Tuesday explosive move, Wednesday also explosive move. On Thursday, you can expect this kind of setup to play out because obviously there's going to be a pause in movement in the market. Okay, and that oftentimes is going to come in form of this. The market is going to give you that setup, but basically, range until. New York close going into the next day, and then oftentimes you could get a reversal or the market would continue in the move. But the market never moves in one direction, just the market has to go up, come down, go up, come down. So oftentimes, ICT London swing to Z day could be used to reverse the market, or usually happens after there has been an extended move in the marketplace or the institutions simply are accumulating price. Okay, so going into number three, ICT London swing to New York open slash London close reversal. And what this simply is, is um, when price opens, typically uh, before Asia, then market, we expect the market to range around Asian session. Then going to London session, session, the market gives that false move down to a higher time frame support level. That is where we're looking to execute the uh, buy orders. And then the market trades up like we expect the market to do. But now, um, what then happens in this condition is that you get a reversal around New York open slash London close. And this only happens if there is a higher time frame resistance around that level. So I think a good example was on, um, uh, let's see, New York Open Reversal. Okay. So we're looking for by days. Let's look for where the market. All right, so let's focus on this price action here on the 20th of November last year. Obviously, the market came down. If you go to the left of your screen, the market had been in an uptrending move, okay, higher highs, higher lows. So that would have been reason. Uh, reason enough for us to look for higher prices on the pound USD. And then what then happens is the market ranges around Asia like we wanted to see. Okay, going back to uh, number three diagram, open. We want to see that drop from Asia, which is what we get around London open. Okay, we get that drop around London open. 
market trades up like we do expect the market trade up, okay? The market trade up, traded up like we expected. And then what then happened is around uh, New York Open, New York Hills, and which was uh, 1.45 GMT plus one, which is gonna be around, uh, let's see, around 8 a.m. 7, 8, yeah. It's gonna be around 8 a.m. ESC. I think so. Yeah, I think so. So what then happened is price obviously gave us that London entry queues and we were able to book about 40 pips or 45 pips of that move. But around New York open, there was a sell move, okay? And that became the move of the day in line with the ICC London swing to New York Open slash London close reversal. So this move came around New York Open. Now, what I said about this kind of buy day template is that if you're gonna see that sell move on the opposite side of the market around New York Open slash London close, then you would expect a higher time frame level resistance level to be there. So. Let's go to our daily chart. Let's say, okay. Okay. So, what the heck is going on? All right. So, this is that day on pound USD. And obviously, you can see that there was a range kind of in the market and uh, this was the range high so daily high around that level and then there was a daily low around this level okay daily high daily low so that obviously is your higher time frame resistance level but now if you zoom closely you can see that there are two equal candles, okay? That would be a nice condition for a turtle soup sell, okay? So pay close attention. So that would be a nice condition for a turtle soup sell, okay? Short term turtle soup sell to get back to probably a daily order block around this level, okay? So there was basically equalized around that level, and then that would be a good condition for the market to total suit that to sell off. So this basically constitutes our higher time frame resistance level. And then what then happens is we could buy around London, but going into New York as price starts to trade into that level, we can expect a reversal in the marketplace. Okay. Let's zoom out, let's see. Okay, uh, yes. Right, so looking at this price point, obviously those are equalized, very clean eyes, okay? So what then happens is the market gets to that level, swipes through those clean eyes and then reverses off from that level, okay? So this would have been a good condition to sell New York Open and buy London Open, okay? So this is one of the 20% of times where uh, New York Open posts a reversal in the marketplace. All right, so that is your ICT London swing to New York Open slash London close reversal setup. Now we go to the fourth diagram, the ICT range to New York Open slash um, London close rally. Okay, so um, let's see, let's see, let's see, is there anything I need to cover more? Okay, so um, number four. Um, ICT range to New York Open slash London Close Rally. Now, what simply happens? This this kind of pattern simply plays out uh, for NFP slash FOMC. Okay, so 
for each of these setups, I want you to take notes on why or how they play out. So you can expect how they play out before they even happen. Okay, you can expect what the uh, the daily the daily range is going to be like before the daily range even posts itself. Okay, and there's different ways you can use to decide what price you're going to do. For example, the ICT classic buy the template. If you have a or sorry, a higher time frame support level below price open, and then there's equalize at the top or there's orders above price open, then you can expect the market to trade into that higher time frame support level and trade into that um, previous highs or hold highs for your tp level so the kind of buy the template you can expect to in the marketplace would be your ict classic buy the template okay price opens ranges around asia drops into london then gives you that setup trades into the old eyes then gives you that uh small retracement then closes for the day okay ict london swing to zd when there has been an extended move in the marketplace or when the last they, the, the previous day was basically a range or where you expect support to come into the marketplace, but you want to see the market range around that price point first. So this is kind of setup you're going to see that day. I see a lot of swing to Z day. And oftentimes over the, the next day or the next two days or three days, you're going to get that explosive move in the marketplace. Now, the ICT London swing to New York slash uh, London close reversal setup is when the market basically opens around Asia. Then you see typically that drop going into London. Okay, the market drops going to London. Oftentimes, it's going to be um, when uh, in line with bullish institutional order flow. Okay, so before you start to look at any of the same place, there needs to be an underlying bullishness in the marketplace for that to support what you want to see on your daily ranges okay so if the market tone is bearish then you're going to look for the ict intraday bearish price templates okay and to get a bearish price template what you simply do is invert everything you're seeing on the chart and that gives you your bearish or sell side template okay for the trading price action except your number six which simply is the range in the marketplace okay so um number four is typically an nfp or fomc day kind of setup okay sometimes usually uh, it also occurs at interest rates announcement okay uh what you're gonna see is around london the market is gonna range range going into london close slash new york open that is where you're going to get your children. So what simply happens here is London is simply going to continue that which Asia was doing. So Asia typically ranges, right? So when you see that range marketplace around Asia and you're expecting probably FOMC or NFP or a red folder news on USD, I'll give an example, okay? Red folder news on USD because oftentimes this happens on USD slash card pairs. Okay, so we expect expecting that news folder on USD or CAD or any of the currency pairs. Okay, what you're often gonna see is the market would stall until around the uh, news release, and you're gonna get that false move down. Okay, which usually would be around New York open slash London close. So you're gonna get that false move down before the market makes its true move. Right, so. What that simply looks like is, uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, mm, okay. Looking for a perfect example. Uh, okay. So, uh, let's see. All right. So, If you look at this by day, obviously institutional order flow is bullish. First thing we want to ensure that institutional order flow is bullish. If you go back in past, 
the market was rallying and this simply is a retracement. So we have reasons to expect bullishness in price for this day. And what simply happened is the market ranges until, uh, market ranges until, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, New York Open. I think Wi-Fi just, just got disconnected. Okay. All right. So um, sorry for that. I think that was my Wi-Fi just getting disconnected. Got Wi-Fi issues. Let's get back to that thing. Okay. So um this is a very perfect example of what i was trying to teach uh simply asia ranges okay let's remove the red box so we get this price trades up in the marketplace then closes with the range asia opens with that range okay asia ranges until uh london open so this is around london open and what london simply does is extend the range so london simply ranges until new york open okay so around new york open price trades back into old eyes from the previous day okay price trades down into that level and gives us the move we wanted to see now this is a friday and oftentimes, if you check uh, Forex Factory on Fridays, you're going to see red folder USD news, which is why I think Pound USD did exactly this. Okay. So the market simply ranged until New York opened when the news announcement would come out and then give us that move we wanted to see and then close the, uh, the day in a consolidation or range, as you might want to call that. So this is a perfect example of the ICT range until New York Open slash uh, London Close Rally. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to the lows. Okay, before price makes that move up, you're always going to get that small turtle soup down to equal low. Okay, so if you look around this level before the market trades up, for the market trades up, the market first comes down to take out clean lows before the market rallies. Okay, total soup down, market goes up. That typically is the uh, that typically is the signal from market that it wants to make its move. The false move down is the same thing you you expect around London. Okay, so around London. Your classic ICC buy template, you want to see that false move down from Asia to give you that long setup. The same thing applies for your new.